Man, I can't believe I didn't get a bite right here. It looks really good. I think it's time to sit down and have a conversation about something that seems so obvious and like, duh, but I guarantee you over the next five minutes, you'll learn something about jig trailers. Okay, now that I have all this stuff out, all these plastics and all these jigs out, um, let's talk about this endless combination of plastics and jigs. Um, and it, I mean, it really depends on what you're trying to achieve. And after experience out on the water, what works, what doesn't work, um, you know, a guy like myself, I'm able to select a jig and trailer combination uh, that works for that lay down right there or that rocky point or that isolated clump of toolies, reeds, whatever it is. Um, but I just want to kind of touch on, uh, you know, just a simple selection um, as far as jig trailers go on the three different types of jigs I have here. It is really easy to match colors, right? Everyone can match colors. Everyone can match a, a black and blue jig to an ok Okeechobee Craw trailer. That's easy. The blues match the blues. The green pumpkins match the green pumpkins. Um, but how about all these different tails? Um, and really, to put it bluntly, anything that's got craw tails that kind of come back inwards and force water to move through it, Anything that looks like that, like your Kraken Craws, uh, Bandito Bug, uh, Trench Hog, anything with those tails slows down your jig. So the bigger the claws you have, the more water disturbance you have on that half ounce jig, the more it's gonna slow the fall of that jig down. So um, I guess really what I have here are my three kind of favorite um, you know, trailers on this, you know, uh, little juicy jig. Okay, this is the casting jig. And the thing about these jigs here, it's got the flat bottom. Every single Guggen Baits uh, jig has got the, the, the weight um, printed on the head. So you always know what size jig it is. But um, for the little juicy jig, it's basically your finesse casting jig. Um, I think, in my opinion, there's no better uh, trailer for that style of casting jig than a Kraken Craw Junior. It just matches up perfectly. Whenever I use a, a crawfish style trailer on a jig, I always want the arms to start past the end of the strands here. And that without biting the head or the tail off that, that craw, um, it matches up with that little juicy jig uh, perfectly. So that's a Kraken Craw Junior. Again, matching colors is, is really, really easy. So that's just a, a 5 16 casting jig. Um, and you know, that 5 16 with the, with the junior size Kraken Craw, it falls like a normal 5 16 ounce jig on a, on a 15 pound test. Um, another solid option, uh, and you really wouldn't think that this for a casting jig, but think about it. A casting jig is meant to be fished just like a worm. So up and down, lay downs, logs, isolated pieces of cover out there off flats or whatever it is. A casting jig is meant to just kind of swim along like a worm. So I like kind of like a trench hog. That's another solid option um, for a little juicy casting jig. Um, and again, so the trench hog compared to the Kraken Craw Junior, you're gonna have smaller uh, craws, smaller arms there, less restriction, it allows you to swim it uh, better uh, along the bottom without that kind of uh, resistance, that water resistance. There's less lift with the Trench Hog Junior uh, compared to the Kraken Craw Junior. So two solid options there. So in short, um, the bigger the claws, the, the, the slower the fall of the jig. So um, you kind of make your adjustments that way. So um, that's kind of the casting jig. Um, now let's talk about swim jigs. Um, this is a Grass Hero swim jig. This, I like this real light one. This is a 3 16th ounce. I like throwing on a 17 and 20 pound fluorocarbon. Um, the thing about swim jigging, uh, you know, Dustin Connell, DC, and those guys down in Alabama, do they do that Alabama twitch? Cast it out there around cover, grass, 
uh, lay downs, whatever it is, and pop it, pop it, pop it. In my opinion, the best trailer you can throw for any style of swim jig is just a rattling chunk. I mean, you listen to that, it's got a nice rattle to it. So think about a square bill or, you know, a, 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 you know, a, a lipless crankbait. It's got that nice rattle to it up there, shallow around grass. But as you cast that, um, that Grass Hero jig out there, this thing has got huge, huge arms, a lot of water resistance, a lot of lift. And every time you pop that rod and pull it across, those, those, um, this rattle and chunk trailer moves a bunch of water. It slows your jig down, meaning that when you pull it through and pop it through those, uh, you know, isolated clumps and, and, and points, um, you know, it stays in the strike zone more. It just kind of floats there. You hear some of the best swim jig guys on tour, um, they like to float a swim jig, um, much like a quarter ounce or even like an eighth ounce spinner bait, just kind of float it in the strike zone there. It works really good pre-spawn around the spawn like that. Um, Speaking of swim jigs, another solid option. Um, if you don't want all the disturbance, you know, and all the racket underneath the water and the floatiness um, of a rattling chunk, another solid option, like let's say for clearer water, more pressured, a more uh, subtle presentation, um, go with a saucy swimmer. That, that, that's just a swim bait, you know, just a saucy swimmer on a, on a 3 16 or a quarter ounce swim jig. The design of a jig skirt is just to give it body and it helps float it the thicker the skirt is. But you know, in the in the trailer section, just one single wobbling tail, a lot of times when you make that adjustment to a, a subtle a saucy swimmer like that on the back of the jig, especially in that clear water, means you know, sometimes you get three, you know, three bites to a, a one bite on the cross dial. So um, that's definitely an option to play with when it comes to swim jigging. So in my opinion, the only two um, trailers for swim jig options, rattle and chunk or a saucy swimmer. Saucy swimmer is more of a, a slow, steady retrieve, just like you would a, a, a regular saucy swimmer or a big swim bait, nice and slow. And then the rattling chunk here is more for, you know, popping uh, and killing it around, you know, pieces of cover and keeping it moving that way. So that's, that's like swim jigging. And moving on to um, my probably my favorite jig, and the one I use on tour from you know from February all the way through December is a thick jig. And basically, a thick jig is just your awesome flipping and pitching jig. Whenever I'm going down the bank with a spinner bait and I see that one isolated log or that one stick up, I always like pitching a thick jig in there. Whether it's a half ounce, which is probably my favorite, or a big heavy three quarter ounce like I'm using today. Um, a flipping jig uh, is great for just that up and down presentation. Um, this thick jig is designed to put, you know, it belongs right in the heart of that cover where those big bass lay. The beauty of a, a jig like this, a flipping jig, not only does it get the biggest bites, but it's built to pull, you know, heavy fish out of heavy cover. So oftentimes I'll fish a thick jig on 20 pound test or 25 pound test fluorocarbon. You could fish it on braid as well. Um, but the, the really cool thing about this, I've got this three quarter ounce and I've got a full size crack and craw on, on the back of this. And why a crack and craw compared to a rattling chunk? Well, the crack and craw has got a longer body to it. And on this bigger six aught flipping hook, it just gives me more body and more offset. Again, I always want my trailers, I want the arms to start at the bottom, you know, down past below uh, where this skirt ends. And basically that gives you the most action in my opinion. So um, for a big, for a thick jig like this, it's really hard to beat a full size crack and craw. Or if I'm doing a lot of pulling up and down around tree limbs, um, a full size trench hog works really well too, especially in the dead of summer if I'm fishing like brush piles, little, little bit shallower brush piles in six to eight feet of water, pitch it in there and swim it over the tops and just let it fall in and out of those, um, those brush piles. And that kind of subtle action, long subtle action, think about a oversized worm like a Mondo worm, works really good in the summertime because of that shape, that long shape, and it's more of a subtle action. So that works really well um, all through the summertime. Now I will tell you this, 
Out of all the jigs and setups here, uh, the thick jig is definitely my favorite. Um, I really, really like a half ounce, and that's this setup right here. Okeechobee Craw is hard to beat. It works in clear water, it works in dirty water. It's just a green pumpkin with blue strands. I love this half ounce. Really cool thing about um, this jig is the, um, the, the weed guard here is it's not double thick, but it's double wide. So I, I absolutely hate it when you pitch into a tree, you know there's a big fish in there, you pitch into it and it rolls over and that hook point catches that tree, you gotta go in there and you mess up that spot. Well, with the thick jig, that, that weed guard is two times as wide. So no matter how it rolls, it's gonna come in and out of that cover um, and it'll only collapse when a big fish eats it. So, um, but really the key is here, out of all the stuff I just talked about, uh, my, you know, the biggest trick I have um, with jig fishing, this flipping jig, this half ounce, um, thick jig here. What I have on the back of it is a bandito bug. It's absolutely my favorite, you know, creature bait. It gets a lot of bites. It's soft. It moves a lot of water. But what happens when you don't separate all the arms and the, and the legs here? What you have is a big flat piece of plastic. So use that to your advantage. What I have here is a half ounce thick jig, but I, I separated all the appendages on this bandito bug. So what that does is it slows it down. There's a lot of water uh, restriction there. There's a lot of commotion going on. It slows that jig down. But what happens if I want to glide? So every now and then, like in clear water, high pressure situations, I want that jig to just kind of glide through and just kind of pendulum sw swing across that, you know, uh, that log or whatever it is. The best way to achieve that is when I rig up a bandito bug on a thick jig is I don't separate the appendages there. So basically I have a flat piece of plastic and when I rig it up on that jig, it's just a plane. It's just a flat plane and it's not moving about and it's just real subtle and as I flip it in there, it just kind of falls and glides real nice. So that's another thing to keep in mind. So with all these different combinations, um, think about that. When you're, when you're pairing a trailer onto a jig, don't, you know, no, don't just think about you know, the size and the weight of the jig or the color, that's all easy. Think about the trailer and what it does in the water and that will help you achieve uh, what you want to achieve that day or you know, th during that condition, that water condition, that water color, you know, in the wind or in the, you know, in the, the cold backwaters or you know, whatever it might be, have fun and play with it. That's what's cool about jig and trailer combinations. It is absolutely endless. But with these tips here, um, hope you could use that, hit the water, catch more fish on a jig because let's face it, a jig is probably the oldest bass lure, but to this day, it still catches fish and it catches a lot of big ones. So have fun with your trailers, match the conditions, play with them, and uh, put more fish in the boat.